Hi again. So, finally a machine is put together. Um, I've cleaned up a little bit and I've connected all the wires using these wire holders um, just to tidy everything up. And right, so, um, where to start really? We have the spindle which is connected um, as per the previous video. So if you want to know how the spindle is connected, please watch the last video that I've just posted. And then we have all the motors and the stepper motors. Now there's a problem, a slight problem with this particular CNC machine, which is um, if you can see, and I'm not too sure if you can see this camera isn't great. So let me try and rotate this towards the lights. So what we have is this here is supposed to hold the spindle in place and just make sure that this is adjusted correctly when the motor spin. Um, unfortunately, the nut isn't glued in any way, so when this spins, sometimes this pops out like so, and this is, tends to happen quite a lot actually, um, even on this platform, as you can see, it can wobble it around, and sometimes in this one as well. Um, now, this isn't too problematic, I have some super glue um, downstairs, so I'll glue that up and make sure that's working but just to show you that the configuration that I previously showed you does in fact work um, I just wanted to show you um, the motors running so this is the bottom motor or the y-axis and it is pushing the platform and you'll hear there we go that's reached the end unfortunately it won't go back as I said because of this problem with the nuts at a moment. Um, then we have the Y axis, so using the keyboard I can control it so it goes up and it goes down and then the X axis as well so I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see it but that's fine there. So as you can also tell um, the bar itself is slightly bent unfortunately it did come like this. Um, it's not too problematic because it still is able to move um, the spindle so that's that's fine but ideally it would be a little bit more straighter. Now, um, let's see if we can get the configuration. So um, for the motor pins, um, what you need to do is download a software called Mac3, which is the software I'm currently running. I had to run it through my old PC, as I said, um, just because it requires a parallel port. And my laptop, unfortunately, does not have a parallel port. So, um, without further ado, all right, so ports and pins. So, ports and pins configuration page. So, you have a few tabs, as you can see at the top. And the important thing on this particular page is the port number, which is on the left. Um, the port number should be 0x378 for this particular board. Um, and then Whenever you make some changes, you don't have to click apply, you can just simply leave it for now. Um, then, what we need here, so for this particular board again, um, this is how the step pin and direction pin should look. And the Y or X, Y and Z should be enabled. So you have step 1 and direction 7, step 8 and direction 3, step 5 and direction 4. And then the step port and direction ports should all be one. Now, we also have the input signal, so I'm not too sure what these are for, but this was what is included in the documentation, which I found online. Um, so as you can see, X plus plus, X minus minus, X home, and the same for Y and Z. So they're all enabled. Um, they're all one, and it starts off with 10, 10 for X, 11 for Y, and 12 for Z and active low is always on. Now, um, just to go back here, um, for the spindle, you don't actually need to have the spindle enabled, as you can see, it doesn't matter what port it's on. Um, the program itself um, has a different way of identifying and um, powering the spindle. I'm not exactly too sure how, but you don't need that enabled for now. Then, what we have, so we have the output signal, so this is what checks um, I think this are the pins on a parallel port, but again, you just need it configured like this. So enable 1, 2, and 3, so for the X, Y, and Z, and then enable the output 1 for the spindle. Um, so spindle port is 1, pin number is 9, 
And then again, so pin number four, X is 14, Y is two, and Z is six. Right, so I think that should be all the options that you in fact need to add. <clears throat> All right, no, so just one more thing. Make sure that this here is not checked and make sure that this is one and this is one, um, unless you want them to spin a different way um, and or anti-clockwise, then yeah, uh, then leave those as they are. So mid options, you don't have to do anything here and you can just leave everything as it is. So there we go. Um, I'll just show you the spindle running. So just to make sure as well, as you can see, when you run Mac 3, um, normally you get this message that comes up. Just hit reset, and then you'll start hearing a buzzing in the machine, and that's when you can start moving the motors around. So whenever you make a configuration change, it will reset, and this will happen. Also, also make sure to go into motor tuning, which is here and adjust the speed according to the type of motors that you have. Um, so you need something which isn't too high. Um, if mine is set any higher than about 350, unfortunately the motors um, just have really, really low torque. So a low speed gives it good torque and it means that it can move the spindles around and it can move the, uh, the, the spindle around. If it has too high a speed, the torque is reduced and it just jitters and unfortunately it can't drive the spindle. So make sure um, when you change a number here make sure you click save axis setting and when you're done click ok and so when you want to play around with a spindle you can hit spindle and there we go so that will get a spindle going i'm not too sure if you can see that but that's spinning quite rapidly and um, there is a way to change the speed of the spindle i haven't looked into this for now but that should be okay and then there you so you can press stop and then the most important really is the G code here, um, the G code option. So you can load some of the defaults that they have included in the software just as get a feel for how it works. Um, you have these zero positions as well. So you'll need to work those out as well and make sure that your axes are correctly adjusted. And yeah, so I won't give you an example of the G code. Um, G code just simply enables you to try out some different designs or some basic designs, but that is for you to discover. Um, okay, so um, thank you very much for your time. Thanks. Any questions, post them below, and um, if I can help you, I'll, I'll answer. I'll be more than happy to. Thank you very much.